so first of all i would like to say my sincere mm-hmm. thanks to all of you guys i mean you have been our supporters for this program it wouldn't have been possible without the support from you yogesh abhishek abnish i mean your companies have supported us it's really a pleasure and we look forward to keep doing more and more better programs so i think we are st- short on time so i'll not take much uh, of the time from your session uh vikram you have the floor please take it ahead Hi. i'll be on backstage and come to you to end the yeah. session vikram. thank you yes, so much are we waiting thank you i do right guys it's uh, let's start our session we were we are already running late a bit so guys it's so so nice to have you around here it's so good to meet you all avnish yogesh abhishek please take my hearty hearty welcome to this uh, conference i really look forward to our discussion and um, again congratulations on having such great great developments uh, up in the industry uh, when we started back in the year in 2012 and right now uh, when we look at things it's like it's really amazing and i think of nish can say to that he has been a, you know he has been there since 2012 2013 uh, when they started in the west coast we were here in the east coast and you know things were just looking very very small and nascent and now look at us there are so many people and there are so many companies uh, you know coming up with such great ideas we have made some really good progressions and again thank you so much guys for setting up a trend in the industry for also seeing that this industry is growing and actually progressing as per the international standards so my heartiest congratulations and my appreciation to all of you now i would like to introduce you to my panel and uh, uh, and the discussion that we will be taking ahead from there from the first i have my dear respected peer avnish pandya who heads the medical division of bohico avnish is a self taught science analyst and comes from an analysis background he combines his prolific insights from business and policy with those from scientific domains and his revelation about hemp apart from research he is also an active liaisoner with the government officials at different levels to translate the vision of bohico into results then we have with us mr abhishek mohan co-founder and ceo of hemp street Abhishek has been a part of the Sunrise Industries his whole career and he is the co-founder and CEO of Hemp Street which is India's first and largest retail uh, research to retail venture in the medical cannabis space the company has very recently won the coveted big grant from Bharat for the commercialization of a potentially world's first transdermal delivery technology and we have lastly we have Mr Yogesh Chamtani co-founder of Buffalo Extraction System Yogesh is an economist and a financial whiz endowed with boundless energy intelligence and multitasking capacity. He is the co-founder of Buffalo Extraction Systems, Bentonville, Arizona. The company offers state-of-the-art extraction solutions catering to the needs of cannabis, hops, nutraceuticals, and pharma industry in the U.S. and Canada. So, I would first like to invite my first guest, Avnish, from Bohico, to start the panel discussion. Avnish, are you there with me? Yes, you? yes, right here with me. Thank you, thank you, Avnish. Now, I, I again formally invite and welcome Avnish here on the, the on the on the podium. And Avnish, uh, are you as one of the leaders in the Indian hemp industry, opportunities and challenges currently you perspective for cannabis. be it seed leaf bud fiber or whole plant extract based otc and prescription products can you please share your insights on this thanks avnish definitely uh, thank you so much vikram the first uh, major aspect uh, is the way we would look at the cannabis plant and Hello? the way the cannabis plant is defined in india as well uh we have the definition yeah. which is specifically the bud or the flower of the cannabis plant is being defined as cannabis which is probably the only narcotic pla- part of the cannabis plant as per the ndps act uh the rest of it which is the leaf and the seeds and the bud and the fiber are not necessarily part of the ndps act the seeds uh, yeah. are considered as a the value additive nutritional ingredient uh, they also find mention in classical and proprietary ayurvedic texts uh, that we have uh, used in various digestion formulations the leaf of the cannabis plant uh, is the most interesting aspect of the indian cannabis industry because it is falling right in the middle of uh, the health and wellness aspect as well as the the non narcotic aspect of cannabis 
the way we look at the leaf is basically a source of cannabinoids uh, a source of cannabinoids which would predominantly mean a source of the active pharmaceutical okay. ingredient but it is present uh, in much lesser proportions and concentration than it would be in the bud uh, as we all okay. know that, that the leaves are regulated uh, as a as a excisable commodity uh, which means they are under the prohibition acts of various states in india certain states uh, have a regulatory framework to allow for cultivation i mean for collection of leaves uh, as well as dispensation through the forms of quota systems uh, either for devotional recreational or quasi medical purposes uh, the biggest uh, the biggest roadblock that i think we are facing uh with this is cannabis is still a collecting industry and not a cultivating industry which means that till a point of time we are only collecting these raw materials the industry is definitely going to have a limitation in terms of what it is being able to kind of create as a final product and present it to the end customer market but also at the same time we need to understand that india is probably the only place in the world today that has a federally regulated system for medical grade cannabis products where it is not only a system that was established in the last few years but a system that was kind of in place from thousands of years through ayurveda uh, also to our forefathers and to to the bureaucrats in the 1980s who were drafting the ndps act they left the leaves and the seeds of the cannabis plant out of the definition of cannabis as per the un odc which has allowed us this opportunity to launch the first generation of products so i think we are the we are the gen 1 of this industry in india products right. like abhishek is working on a transdermal patch products like you would be working on which is like nano emulsifying cannabis is the gen 2 and the gen 3 uh, where we will see the indian consumer actually benefit Uh, out of the modern technology that is available in the world versus the traditional knowledge that india brings uh, to to cannabis as well thank you thank you avnish thank you so much for that that was a really really very insightful uh now my second question would be like what do you feel are the major challenges and opportunities with regards to commercial cannabis cultivation in different states of india as a company you are spread out in pan india could you please share your insight on what you have faced as like you know as a major hurdle for this cannabis cultivation thanks avnish correct i think vikram in your introduction you kind of brought it out clearly that there are three to four states in india who already have some version of a policy to cultivate cannabis either for research or for commercial purposes let's take the state of uttarakhand for example that has a research and a commercial policy uttarakhand in 2015 2016 kind of devised the policy to cultivate hemp which would have thc percentages lesser than 0.3% Uh, and they would ideally have to be registered varieties uh, that were either imported from outside or indigenously developed i think the major crux of cultivating cannabis at scale and we are going to see this issue coming up in a larger way is the funny part that india has its own ocean but it does right. not if it can even drink a sip of that water so we have all the cannabis in the world but we do not know what standardized cannabis is for example right. if we are in industrializing any commodity uh, its standardization is of prime importance whether it is to the consumer or you're talking about the supply chain efficiencies in the middle or the producers of these drugs as well so there is a lot of plant based research uh, and cultivation and agrotech research that i believe the industry is missing out on currently uh, there is not that much impetus that is provided uh, to doing that specific breed identification uh, or segregation of the right kind of crops uh, that are there so it is very important for us as an industry to push the government departments uh, as well as our own peers to focus on our ability to cultivate the right kind of cannabis plants for example if india has to become a major cannabis economy it will require its varieties it will require for example the chinese have 12 to 13 varieties of hemp identified and registered with their national bureau of genetics india needs to go down that path 
we've been able to scale rice we've been able to scale wheat we've been able to scale a lot of other pulses and millets in areas where we never thought they would grow uh but cannabis needs that kind of structured breeding outlook whether it is for medical or industrial purposes it really doesn't matter as far as we have standardized cannabis that gives us that outlook it is important and of course once we have this it's a chicken and egg argument right today right. we have uttarakhand has already created this policy of 0.3% thc now let's say if there were 10 companies working towards developing these genetics we would definitely have the right kind of uh, the right kind of other state governments opening up saying that we are right. seeing these results are going to come ek do saal mein to seed aa hi jayega for example so tab tak we can do something second thing right. is rely on international genetics uh, we've imported more than 50 different varieties from the us canada europe uh, in our trial plots the one thing we are seeing is cannabis is so sensitive to latitude that you are it is next to impossible to be able to grow those same plants with the same yield in the latitude in india considering our day length uh, is very different the day length in the temperate zones is much higher they have 16 hour 18 hour days for example the season that we're going through right now versus in india it would be capped at 12 to 14 hours so we are seeing early flowering uh, plus cannabis is not a registered uh, plant item under the national bureau of genetics uh, so yeah. importing that is not listed has its own own hiccups so i think the government has the right protectionist mindset with this the more work actually has to be done by people like us because mm. we are not, we are not going to see the government come and say i will increase the thc limit to 1.5% uh, on the basis of what on the basis of what scientific evidence or what mindset so i think the the plant sciences bit is where i see a lot of the the, the real industry challenges coming forward Uh, because we won the first battle the perception mm. battle i think we have won that you know at least people now are willing to have a honest genuine conversation that this is real you right. meet you meet an narcotic commissioner or you meet a director of narcotic control they don't treat this as a side item anymore this is uh. this is there it is a focus states have taken uh, those steps there have been political expedients who have kind of gone out and given a conversation out there we see states like northeast madhya pradesh some of the states that you didn't mention uh, who have already done some of the other work there so yeah. it is now on in the industry to kind of you know present that industrial version of this crop saying how yeah. it is going to benefit uh, a lot of the farmers as well as the the kind of patients at the end of it thank you thank you avnish uh, thank you so much avnish that was again very very insightful i'm pretty sure our viewers would have really enjoyed and appreciated such an inf- insightful communication and now i have one more question for you so the this question is like as again you know you have been an industry leader and you are still taking on that in a very very nice way would you please give me some of your personal take on the evolution and the growth of the legal indian cannabis ecosystem from the time when you started and now and what is bohika's vision for a collective narrative for the future of the indian hemp industry thanks avnish thank you vikram so i think objectively the way i would look at the future unfolding is india actually leveraging its legal cannabis status federally legal cannabis status uh uplifting the status of ayurveda from what we know as snake charm and snake oil <laughs> medicine actually what is kind of acceptable in the real world as well so ayurveda is working on some basic and fundamental principles which need to be translated into modern science for Absolutely. example marker based analysis identifying active pharmaceutical ingredient doing some pkpd pharmacokinetic dynamic studies on how this uh, uh, actual active pharmaceutical ingredient is working i'll give you right. an example for example Please. we have been using fats and lipids to extract cannabinoids for thousands of years but right. we just call them milk and ghee we never call yeah. them and lipids for example right so we have the know how we have it it requires people who are kind of able to see both the worlds simultaneously both the worlds exactly yeah there is a real world out there india is its own microcosm 
and if india has to actually launch itself it is about bringing this in place and in fact the government has a tremendous piece of legislation known as the phytopharmaceutical regulation of india exactly. which talks about creating pharmaceutical drugs uh, that would come from plant based sources that would actually be uh, uh, prescribed and and offered by modern medicine practitioners so us as industry our job is to kind of put our money where the mouth is exactly uh, and uh, and do that kind of research as you mentioned for example the birag grants uh, uh, a lot of the clinical work so we are also assisting tata memorial hospital in importing this cannabis from the netherlands uh, in the office That's of really this we oh, have wow. we are undergoing a trial at the national institute of ayurveda for uh, our arthritis based products so it is about leveraging these government institutes bringing them on board on a similar platform raising the level of conversation i think no more we are talking about bunch of ganjeris trying to do something it is about like actual white collar hippies uh, who have entered this space and wanting to create a real dent in i think i've taken enough of your time please let's move on as well the no, no, thank you so much avnish that was a lovely lovely discussion and thank you so much for your personal insights and also for giving us a, a view of what bohiko is doing and of bohiko's future initiatives uh thank you so much avnish it was lovely speaking with you here and again i look forward to more connections like this and and a chance to interact again now next i would like to call uh, on the panel my dear respected colleague and my peer from the industry uh mr abhishek mohan would you please give us a little bit of a brief about your company and about your work a little bit and then we will progress on to those exciting topics from there on so yeah i mean hempseed is a research retail medical cannabis company we currently uh, have a, we came out of the uh, the ayurveda space but we also have a foot in uh, you know advanced research around uh, you know the more uh, western style uh cannabis based products and uh, we're currently in uh, 24 states in india we have a little over 2200 clinics uh we were born out of the out of really the need to solve a lot of india's major problems so we then we looked at cannabis as an avenue to solve mass ailments in india uh we always we don't uh, i mean we entered this industry to 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 tackle you know some some of the major problems that we saw and uh, now that we were in here we we wanted to build a best in class uh, business whether it's you know whether it's uh, research whether it's uh, how it's retailed how it's dispensed to make sure you track to make sure you don't become the next uh, you know off label sale uh, industry uh, we looked at the opioid crisis what was happening in san francisco which i saw for yeah just to finish i mean we've uh, we we entered uh, this market to uh, to basically solve some of the pressing issues that that we've seen in india and then um, yeah i mean we're research retail we're present all over the country and we're trying to you know trying to fight these mass ailments that's i mean that's uh, i'll speak from the heart here right so i, I think uh, everybody will agree the first movement in in cannabis was people trying to create a cannabis industry rather than you know what it was what the end use was for right i mean there was a lot of peddling of hemp seed oil or cbd there's a lot of people just trying to make money <laughs> off cannabis because that was that was kind of the that was kind of the 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 fashionable thing that's overcapitalized canadian companies the news waves are full of the story so so that's what people went went for right i mean so the idea was uh, you know if if somebody you know you have to build for the long term you have yeah. to make sure that you self regulate you have to make yeah. sure that you sacrifice kind of that cutting corners i mean it's not sacrifice if you're cutting corners it's wrong like you wrong. you you build for you build for the impact you build for the long term you that's why for us we we deployed i mean uh, we today and like i said we have we since we've launched in in a uh, first product in december we are now in a little over 2200 clinics in 24 states in india but we could have been four times that that uh, that amount you know and that that probably puts us in one of the biggest uh, rollouts of medical cannabis clinics in the world but yeah. we insisted on vetting of the doctors we insisted on a blockchain based system where we are protected from even our own future greed if if at all mm. i mean the idea is that we need to build for the long term I and mean, if you're trying to replace opioids if you're trying to say you're not going to be those uh, over abuse pain relief medication then you have to kind of you know you know put your put the money where your mouth is you have to basically make those sacrifices in in growth to to make sure that it's a responsibly built industry i mean there there's still a lot of lot of like 
unscrupulous nonsense that's happening and you know it's it's just terrible i think the industry needs to it come is. together to basically make sure that we don't kill it before it starts and and right. it's again about the people right if it's about it's about the impact that you're having on i mean on people a half our population is suffering from a debilitating menstrual cramps and you want to shut that down because you wanted to sell some off label nonsense on on the internet i mean like you want to be able to have a pill mill you want uh, your single doctor prescribing to thousands of clinics and and again the idea is also that cannabis that's one of the dangerous things that's happened globally is that with so much capital going to cannabis people have started believing cannabis can solve everything right and and that's also not true as a player in the market i would say no you need to go to a doctor it may not be for you it may not be for the ailment that you're that you're using so i think that's the, and and similarly with ayurveda right if you've taken the ayurvedic path as we have you respect the art you respect the practice you make sure the patient visits a doctor goes through his analysis or you don't do it this this whole loophole business needs to stop and and you have to build for the long term again it this is a 100% impact business whether it's on the farmers whether it's on patients but on patients a 100% impact business you you're providing people something that they never had any relief from so it's a tremendous responsibility and i and everybody should act on that basis oh uh, thanks vikram thanks sir for us uh, so uh, uh, we run a turnkey uh, automation company called buffalo extraction systems uh, we've been working with clients in us canada africa and europe uh, throughout the value chain uh, we are uh, turnkey automators we help them from cultivation to extraction to getting their product out be it isolate distillate crude or uh, full spectrum and broad spectrum um so we take pride in using technology throughout the value chain and uh, i think we'll get into that later when we speak specifically about our products and our offerings um at the moment i'll take this time uh, and i'll cut the questions short on uh, vikram uh, pardon me for doing that uh, uh, we've spoken a lot about the industry in general about how uh, the legal infrastructure in india is at the moment india is quite nascent in terms of uh, legalization and as for the uh, npps act of uh, 1985 how there are certain restrictions uh, i would like to add uh, two uh, pieces there that uh, within the as uh, abhishek mentioned that within the resources and the legal infrastructure we have india is federally legal and uh, when we compare it to the west uh, be it canada or the us the farm bill got approved in uh, 2018 when uh, you know um, uh, hemp was supposed uh, could uh, legally move around the country not uh, thc for uh, recreation purposes or uh, canada for that matter uh, when 98 they uh, they made uh, um uh, industrial hemp legal in 2016 they made uh, um it uh, t- recreational and uh, uh pharmaceutical legal throughout the country india we we have a drugs in the row at the moment and we should start looking within uh, to add to points that are uh, abhishek uh, uh, abhishek have already raised that we have an infrastructure already in place where entrepreneurs if they come forward and look try to be resourceful as opposed to finding new resources and pinning uh, pending problems in the legal system there is a lot of lying already in the, on the move in certain states uh, like uttar pradesh uttarakhand madhya pradesh rajasthan we've been hearing a little bit of stuff here where they've been talking to uh, the parliament people here to see how we can do that we do have the landmarks in place there is a certain problem on daylight uh, yes we may not have as long as harvest cycles but we do have the weather patterns and the soil in our favor uh, all i would want to say when we compare it to the legal system that we will eventually get there uh but uh, at the moment for entrepreneurs to come in and say that hey we have these problems uh that we are facing in the legal structure and hey uh, this is the reason I'm not able to do business to abhishek point we already have a lot that can be done within the ayurveda sector and to federally launch products play around with the value uh, value chain uh, and find pieces uh within the value chain be it uh, in cultivation be it in extraction product development developing um, active pharma ingredients we may start anywhere and when the gold rush starts we will be in a position to gear up to scale our businesses at 100x we do have enough information to go out there to vcs to go out there to the west and seek money to build strong businesses in india um so uh, that's my two cents on the business structure and uh, a bit of motivation on this end so we are not just looking at anomalies and problems in the structure it is federally legal and uh, we have enough data and information to press a button um a second point i say it's not just cultivation extraction or businesses uh directly related to cannabis i remember when the gold rush happened it's, it's you know it's the pick and shovel uh, uh anomaly where it's not just uh, uh the miner who's making the money or the extractor or the cultivator who's making the money my advice to entrepreneurs is uh, 
uh, when you are out there, you've got to be looking at um, all supporting businesses through the value chain. So be it empowerment of the farming communities, that's to begin when the landmass opens and when we introduce this cash crop and cultivation becomes legal. Thinking about that from the get-go and thinking about it at the moment is a great start because that uh, when the time is right, you have your MVPs in the correct position uh, and to press the bell. Uh, also to note uh, that uh, digitization is a great way. I know uh, Abhishek is low, uh, using a lot of um, uh, technology uh, on this end uh, to, uh, uh, to empower the Ayurvedic doctors in the country. So use of technology and immersive experience and supporting businesses to the value chain not just the core value chain. So we've got a whole lot of arenas to play here and to start off businesses and to start thinking about sustainable businesses that will have a competitive edge going forward. So uh, that's my two cents. Just I want to add, I did not want to repeat on the legal structure or uh, the great points that Abhinesh and Abhishek already brought to the table. Anybody that has any questions um, for um, anything they do from importing seeds to getting the final product within the legal framework, uh, please feel free to hit us up. Uh, we are happy to give you hours and consult you um, at of cost for you to enter the industry. And more the merrier at this point. Um, uh, that's my two cents. If anybody has questions, please. Actually, we've, we've had some very good conversations uh, around the world. But I mean, while we're primarily focused on solving India's problems. I think, uh, like I said, right, we have to own this industry. I mean, it's it's something that we have such a long relationship with. We have the pharma, with the pharmacy of the world. We have such a long relationship with, uh, with Ayurveda and cannabis. I think there's a lot we can contribute, some we can contribute, you know, towards the global market. I think from a holistic point of view, I think there's, there's, a, there's quite a bit we can contribute, just like we have with Ayurveda. Okay. You're getting and from a research that? perspective, there could be very good partnership. I would say Israel, for example, where we have you know, some great stuff happening. Yeah, that would be an angle. That there's a lot of, uh, to Abhishek's point, uh, on the research side, there's a lot that still can be done within India. And there is a lot of research grants already coming into the country to all the CSR institutes. These may not be out there in public, but the research is on. So as soon as we may not have, we may not have isolation of cannabinoids legally, but we do have the research in place that is already being done on the cultivars that are present in the Indian landscape. So those research, thanks to our Central Institutes of Medicinal and Aromatic Plants, on the different cannabinoids that are available in the country, is ongoing. And there is big money coming in North Ontario. So I'm, we are not, I'm not, we are not, we should, as entrepreneurs, we should not, it's not wrong to start bootstrap. And uh, I think anybody who's received money will also agree. It's the learning at the beginning that when you get your MVP correct, you have your value proposition right, and you go out there with a sustainable plan. And it's the right time to go ahead uh, at the point. So and money will come in. It's not just, a... just going out there seeking out for money and start when you receive money. You want to start first and the money will follow in it. Yeah, and I think a shout I think out to CSI. I mean CSI deserves a shout out for sure. I mean we've we've definitely done some great work with them. But I, again I, I think the key is that the cannabis industry is has to work as a well. Like I said, everybody brings their best game, right? Ayurveda's one side, what we're doing in India is one side, research on one side. The fact that, you know, it solves so many mass ailments around the world, we shouldn't isolate ourselves right. into having country, country, you know, oh, yeah, we do this. This is our standard. No, in the end, we are all in this business to help. I mean, on the medical side, at least uh, in this business to, to help people. So if you can have the maximum mm -hmm. impact, so if everybody brings their best game, I think this this is one chance, right? By and large, I feel... I feel my experience is that medical cannabis people around the world that I've met have been pretty cool people. Like you know, so I think there's a chance for you know for us to to kind of make a change. So I would say you wouldn't look at anything country specific. I mean, what what if everybody did what they were really good at? Uh, I think we'll all get to the finish line much faster. Okay. okay. Uh, Just to top uh, off what Abhishek said, you know, it was going to be very important for us to support these CSIR institutes. Government institutes run on very thin budgets and year on year we see these budgets being slashed for these institutes. If companies are not going to support uh, these institutes to do the research, we are not going to be able to build an industry. Because we might have 50 to 100 hemp companies in India today, but we'd have probably one or two only that are actually willing to do some long term work. The rest are pretty much interested in bottling a product and selling it for a margin. So that exactly. is that 
that mindset is important more than anything. Correct. That's a very important thing that you have to uh, say. Guys, uh, we are a bit pressed for time. Sorry to cut short because Jeffrey Railing is waiting for his session. Mm. So, thank you all for being part of the program today. Uh, really sorry about the small technical things we were having today. So, stay tuned for the program. We have some wonderful sessions coming up now. Thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you, Yogesh. Thank, thank you, Avnish. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.